Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. My name is Dan Petralia, and I'll be your host for today. Thank you for joining us for another Flycast Partners webinar. Today's webinar is What is New with BMC Footprints in Version 12? It's going to be presented by Greg, Mr. Greg Gilden. Greg has been with the company for a very long time, pretty much since its inception. He has a proven history in leadership, consulting, ITIL implementation, and developmental stewardship of all ITIL best practice disciplines, including change management, problem management, incident management, ITIL configuration, and release management. Greg is well into his second decade in the IT industry with several hundred implementations under his belt. But before we get started, let me introduce our organization. Flycast Partners is here to deliver a seriously amazing IT experience, founded and staffed by personnel that have many years of experience in the IT space. We took the best ideas from these collective experiences and added the best components necessary to grow and become a leading value-added reseller in the North American IT market. We offer best-in-class implementation services and training in ITSM, ITAM, workload automation, capacity optimization, and enterprise service management using ITIL best practices. Our professional services can easily scale up or down to meet the IT needs of any customer, regardless of size, complexity, or budgetary restrictions. We offer implementation services both on-site and remote, as well as training to reinforce your company's long-term IT success. Our ongoing remote administration and support service offerings will enable your organization to focus on your normal day-to-day -day operations by saving our customers time and money. Please visit our site at flycastpartners.com or feel free to call us at 1-844-FLYCAST. This is just one of our weekly webinars, so what I'll do real quickly here is show you guys um, our webinars page. If you just uh, go to the top corner on our homepage on the hamburger and go down to webinars, you can see all of the upcoming. We usually like to have a handful, at least over half a dozen on there and you can uh, register um, well in advance for anything that uh, piques your interest there. And um, we encourage you to utilize the site for re researching other things as well, industry white papers, training that's available for ITIL and ITSM tools, assistance with professional services, and enterprise service management consulting. Uh, Greg will answer uh, as many questions as time permits today after his presentation, so please feel free to type your questions in, uh, direct them towards myself or Greg, and then we'll be sure to get them uh, answered at the end. And now, without further ado, I will pass things along to the man himself, and I'm going to give him a presentation access now so he can control the screen. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in today. Um, as Daniel alluded to, we are here not to talk about eAgrees, but really to talk about footprints. Now, BMC has taken the footprint solution, and in fact, it's been pretty much three years almost to the day that we did our first implementation of Footprints V12. And over that time period, BMC has been trying to trickle in capabilities to better align it with earlier versions of the product, of course, while still maintaining the capabilities that makes V12 a very, very different animal, right? The fact that it is an object-oriented solution, the fact that it still uses workspaces but allows you to access those from anywhere that you want, so you still have limited access but can see them now without having to drill it to the workspace itself. And its workflow capabilities, really its entire engine is different. So these things are all improvements from the earlier versions of the product. And over time, BMC has been working to obviously add new bug fixes as well as capabilities to the solution to help improve its stability. And we at Slackass firmly believe that the Footprints V12 solution is one absolutely worthy of going to, particularly given its, its capabilities over earlier versions of Footprints. So what I want to be able to do is, you know, I can't really discuss a whole lot in terms of what may be coming down the pipe. I do know that BMC is working on a current beta release right now, and some of you may be beta testers who are, who are on the call. That release should be forthcoming. I can't give you any information about what it is. Uh, BMC doesn't want to promise things that they end up not delivering in the end, but rest assured that there will be additional features and additional stability fixes coming out in the, in the most recent beta that's being worked on. So that said, we'll just talk a little bit, kind of a high-level review, of some of the footprints capabilities, particularly as it pertains to 
version 12 because there are some major differences in the way version 12 works versus the way earlier versions of footprints worked and those capabilities are, are things that really make a big difference in, in the way you can utilize the product, especially if you folks may be on an existing version of Footprints and looking to make some changes. So first things first, Footprints in earlier versions and today is still a web-based tool. So we're still running from the web. A web browser on any platform will work fine. If the browser supports HTML5, which literally all modern browsers do on any platform, you should be good to go because Footprints now outputs all of its data as HTML5, which makes it much easier to scale for any size screen. So whether you're using your iPad or your Chromebook or your Mac or your Windows tablet or your Surface Pro or whatever you happen to have, Footprints does not care what lives under the hood as long as there's a web browser on the platform and can browse to the website, you can make Footprints work. Footprint still uses a concept called a workspace like it used to do. For those of you who may be on really early versions of, of Footprints prior to version 10, for example, those were called projects back in the day. We were really happy at version 10 that they changed the name of them to, to workspaces. But workspaces represent the collection of things that you can manage, incidents and requests for change and service requests and facilities requests and projects and literally any kind of blank management process where there's a beginning, middle and end. Folks like to use footprints around the globe for things that aren't IT. In fact, the Gartner statistic shows that roughly 80% of the people who use footprints on the planet use it for things that aren't IT. So its power really lives in the fact that it is a potent workflow engine for any process you have. If you're not currently using it for things like Word documents that you're shipping around in email or Excel forms or PDF documents that people are filling out and mailing somewhere, then it's a great opportunity for you to extend the capabilities of footprints in your organization by using it for those functions. You can include the ability to approve requests and move that right through the footprint lifecycle. You can make sure that those requests capture the data that you have on your Word or PDF document and move them along so that you're not trying to chase these things through an email somewhere, but instead are tracking it in a robust workflow engine <clears throat> like footprints can re represent for you. And footprints still remains a codeless tool. So we still don't need to use any code, no scripting, no language, no programming. Everything is done with your mouse and your keyboard so that you can point and click your way to the setup of Footprints once you've learned your way around the back end a little bit. And we'll talk briefly about some of that part of the discussion. Now, some of the things that are really different about version 12 of Footprints, especially for those of you who may be coming from a different version, are the fact that we don't live in workspaces anymore. Right up over here in the corner, for those of you who or on older versions, you used to have your workspace selector, or if you were an admin, you had the ability to choose to administer footprints from here. Those workspaces are still just as limited as they used to be in terms of who can access them. So we haven't opened up the world to everybody to gain access to all functions. We still limit your capabilities and footprints based on who you are and the role you should have within the organization. But Rather than having you have to drive around in Footprints, moving from place to place to open different tickets in different workspaces, Footprints now brings all the work to you. So that means, as I look at this from a perspective of a technician, right, agents in Footprints speak, the other perspective is that of a customer, which we're gonna talk about a little bit as well. Customers can, of course, log in and see the kinds of functionalities you'd like them to see. But from the perspective of an agent or a customer, the interaction that you have is now, rather than being at a workspace level, the workspaces are now brought to you. And I've actually included buttons here so that I can gain access to some of the ones that, that I use most frequently. But we can include workspace information or any sort of slice through our data that we'd like in what are called our consoles. Consoles can include information about our address books or other objects and footprints, and they can all be displayed here if I want. You can see I can say, hey, I wanna turn my service catalog console on, and now I have access to the service catalog and can move back over to my home screen and get access to those tickets again. So you're never leaving the workspace that you're in. You're not having to move around from place to place in footprints, the work is instead brought to you. And it's brought to you in the collective that's referred to as your portal. So your portal and your view of footprints is really represented by which consoles you're able to see, which things you're able to gain access to and do. If you're not an administrator, you would not have the administrative console like I do, for example, in my system. Workspaces and footprints 
can be accessed from your console, whether you do it as buttons like I did, or whether you simply choose an action, pick a workspace that you'd like to open up, and you can see I have many of them in my demo environment. And that's one thing that's important to note, guys. My environment is configured for me, right, as, as ways of showing off ways things that Footprints can do or demonstrating the fact that we can take tickets, which is kind of a, a unnatural capability of these solutions. But Footprints, being as flexible it is, as it is, point-and-click interface and all, this means that you don't have to make your system look anything like this. In fact, most folks don't. They have their own businesses to run with their own needs and their own wants and desires in terms of what their forms and records should look like. And Footprints, because it is codeless, allows you to quickly tailor it so that it can look the way you want it to and behave the way you want it to and notify the right folks at the right times. So just keep that in mind as we discuss the product. Is Footprints doesn't have to look like this at all, but it's one way that you could potentially configure it. Now you can see, as an agent, I have access to lots of different information on my home screen. I can bring this information back like I have it set now, or I can customize this information. You can see here's my in-progress tickets report right down there. You can see here's my level one tickets right down here, and I can add additional widgets to, heat to this so that I can bring additional charts in if I would like, configuring them the way I want to, and have more information displayed up top. Or simply create different views so that I can slice through my data any way I want, whether I want to view my service catalog or see tickets assigned to me or see all tickets from last week or whatever makes sense to me. This makes sure that when I interact with the product, the information I need is at my fingertips. And let's face it, if I've got to comb around in the system to find the stuff that I need to do my day job, it's going to make doing my day job harder. Footprints brings the information to you so that you can work smart rather than hard. And every time you save a minute or two, especially if you're taking hundreds, sometimes thousands of tickets a month, Every minute you save is another minute that you didn't have to work in the system, right? So Footprints tries to make sure that you can work as smart as possible by bringing the information right to your fingertips that you need and by allowing you to modify it so that it can look exactly the way you want. Now I want to get this information out of my way quickly just so that I can work on tickets in full screen. Here you can see I'm looking at all of my records listed out, so every ticket that, that I happen to have open. Some of them are just simple ticket numbers. Some of them have words in front of them and a ticket number. Footprints V12 lets me create my own alpha characters for these terms. So the alphanumeric terminologies for biomedical tickets versus my EDDS tickets versus my simple tickets for communications, et cetera. Each workspace can have its own numbering so that the tickets from that workspace, biomed, EDDS, et cetera, will be easily identified directly here on my home screen or wherever they're displayed. So ticket numbering, a big change in the way Footprints used to operate. You could set numbers before, but you had to do it in the database. Here in Footprints, it's done in version 12 right through a point-and-click interface. It allows you to create your own alpha characters so that you can quickly see which tickets belong where. And those workspaces allow us to open tickets, as I mentioned, of any type. So any kind of record that has a beginning, middle, and end, really. Right? Any process where I'm gathering information, sending it to somebody to fulfill and then checking to see how we've done, can be managed inside of Footprints. So whether that's incidents or facilities requests, project requests or service requests, or any other kind of blank function that you might have. Footprints allows you to quickly sketch up a workspace, dragging and dropping the fields on the form with your mouse so that the records can look the way you want. And in my case, you can see that my incident record here looks quite a bit different from the facilities ticket that I have open for example, that I just opened up. Now you can see I have all the information necessary to capture a facilities request. And this request is only going to be viewed by the facility folks. So nobody who isn't entitled is going to be viewing these tickets. In fact, I can make sure that only the right facilities team members look at the facilities tickets assigned to them. Because if they're doing yard work and they're a locksmith, they probably don't need to see yard work tickets. Right? They're not assigned to do that work. So in this way, whoever they are, IT folks, facilities folks, human resource staff, whoever happens to be working at Footprints, will see only the tickets they're entitled to and no one else will be viewing their records. So in this way, HR can work peacefully and side by side with everyone else because security and Footprints make sure that nobody sees tickets or data that doesn't belong to their eyes, that their eyes aren't allowed to be cast on. You're also noticing that 
unlike older versions of Footprints, if you're on those older ones, I no longer have to switch workspaces up here to get access to more than one ticket. In fact, in the old version, when I changed workspaces, I was forbidden to do what I'm doing now, just toggle between workspaces. I'm going to open up a request for change here just to give you an idea. Every workspace is fit for purpose in Footprints so that those processes Imagine them as your Word documents you're kicking around right now. All those processes and capabilities can quickly be accessed without having to pack up your bags and move workspace to workspace like the old versions of the product used to be. So much more flexible in that regard in terms of inputting your data. Now, one of the other things that's changed dramatically in V12 is the fact that Footprints V12 is an object-oriented solution. I know that sounds like a mouthful of, of words. But object-oriented versus somewhat flat, such as in the older versions, means that everything, whether it's tickets related to other tickets or people, my contacts, for example, related to my tickets or my configuration items related to my tickets, everything is an object in Footprint, so everything can be related, reused in any way that I choose. And that gives me the ability to take my contacts, for example, relate this ticket to them. I'm just going to pull up information, find all the Gregs bring Greg back into this ticket. And what I do, I've returned Greg into what's referred to in V12 as a link control. This is something that never existed before in Footprints. Link controls are tunnels. They let you look into other containers and bring back information from them, even returning data from those other containers right here in the, in the incident record or whatever record you happen to be in. That way, the information from far-flung processes that you might be running can all be brought into a single place so that you can have your eyes and ears across the organization and return data that's relevant for your job without having to pack your bags and move to a different workspace or without having to change the ticket directly because I can see my contacts without having to bring up the address book, right? without having to go into my address book console, for example, right here, and then pull up the contacts from there I can simply pull that information up right from here and have that information present inside of my incident record. Now, because I've connected Greg to this ticket, I also have access to some information about Greg. I can drill into Greg's record exactly as if I had gone to the address book and drilled into Greg's record from here. Right? I can pull up that same information from here and so show Greg's information, Greg's details. This means I can see every time Greg has contacted me at the service desk. I can find out how many tickets Greg has open. They're all related back to the contact record that is Greg, and they're all related using that link control again. So Greg, as a record in the address book, can also see all the tickets that Greg had ever opened. And if I really want to get into some details, I can allow Footprints to show this relationship as really a, a relationship map. right? This relationship map lets me even visualize pictures of the way the tickets, all Greg's tickets, are related to Greg, like a boy related to his dog. And if I want to see things related to his dog, then I can look a little further out and say, hey, show me the things related to Greg's tickets. Footprints builds this view, this image, simply by virtue of the fact that I have linked Greg to the incident record. And sometimes some of these tickets have other record types linked to them. Same way I linked Greg to the incidents, right? Greg as a contact is linked to some of these other items, knowledge base articles, master tickets, assets, etc., all linked back so that I can quickly get a view of exactly what's happening in the organization with regards to Greg, how many times Greg has contacted us, as well as information about additional tickets that might be related. This lets me see a bigger, broader picture in the organization and lets me have a better understanding of exactly what's going on with Greg as a contact, all garnered simply because I chose to, in my incident record, link Greg back into this ticket. Now, of course, I can go in and type some information in here if you'd like. It's exciting to watch me type. There, that was exciting, wasn't it? But capture the detail that you choose. In my particular workspace, you can see I'm capturing my statuses, which are all flexible. Use your own terms here. I have my own versions of them in my environment. These are quickly changed, and I'm going to talk a little bit about how you do that. Modify impact and urgency so that you can get the appropriate priority. One of the top reasons for failed ITSM implementations is because every ticket was treated as if it were critical. 
and every request became the number one issue. And we know that can't be true because if everything is number one, then what is the number two priority? How do we get second things if we don't know which things are really first? And if everything is first, then it's like the old adage, if everyone is Superman, then no one is Superman, right? Everyone is the same now. So make sure that you can capture your priority without asking a customer, what's your priority? Ask them real world things like, hey, are you unable to work? Or is your job impaired? Right? Or is it this something that we're doing for a project, which means there is no timeline except the project's timeline that I'm gonna be merging to. So if we said, look, these folks are unable to work and the customer said, you know what? It's me in this department and probably the other departments too. Notice this now becomes an urgent request because I've weighed in with impact and urgency. Also note, I didn't use low, medium, and high here, because if I could have an extra high and an extra low, could I also have an extra medium? Those terms don't really mean anything except related to each other. You're better off using real world terms like this to help get you to your prioritization. Capture whatever detail that you'd like to here so that you can log exactly what's going on with the record. And of course, if you wish, you can bring information back from the footprints knowledge base. Maybe this person is calling about, and I'm just gonna drill into my knowledge base here. Maybe this person is calling about issues with Microsoft Word and they're looking to figure out how do you recover a lost document because they're about to head to a meeting and they can't find it. I have just copied that knowledge base article directly into this record. And just to give you an idea of what it actually looks like, I popped it out. So you can see it full screen. This article, this knowledge base article was just pasted right in there from my knowledge base. I didn't have to do a thing. I didn't have to type it. And in fact, I cheated when I created the knowledge base article because I copied it from TechNet and pasted it into footprints. I just said, hey, I build a knowledge base article with this data. That way, me being lazy, I didn't have to format any of this stuff or put the bullets in. Footprint simply maintained the formatting for me. So it makes the knowledge that you already have rapidly usable because you don't have to reformat it. You can literally just paste it in, whether it includes pictures or hyperlinks or what have you. Footprints will maintain that information for you. Now I've returned information to this ticket from about my asset too. This is because we're tied in with BMC's client management. And assets information in tickets is huge because when folks call you, especially for break fix stuff, this is just statistical, uh, analysis, if you look at it, most of the time, the reason a person calls is because something is wrong with their local machine. Sometimes it's my environment. Right? Sometimes it's something wrong with my servers or my switches or my routers or my storage arrays, etc. But most of the time, it's local. The three finger salute has gotten very popular. Reboot the machine and look, it works again. So instead of having to chase the customer down and kneel next to them to fix their machine, right? Or have them bring their device over so that I can connect it to the network and work on it. I can literally take action against that machine from right inside the footprint record, simply remote controlling it, starting and stopping Windows services, viewing their event logs, doing all the stuff that I would normally have to go across town or across campus to do. And this is because I'm tied in with another product it used to be called Footprints Asset Core, now called BMC Client Management. BMC changed the name of it. Same product, same capability ties in with Footprints tightly to the point where it was named the same thing before, right? BMC's client management used to be called Footprints Asset Core. And its job is to pull information back so that if I want to, I'll just look at my running Windows services here. If I want to start or stop Windows services sitting on my virtual machine, I can say, hey, you know what? That Acrobat service, it's annoying me. I'm just gonna stop it. It's not gonna run anymore. And I've now stopped the service without having to run across town to their machine to do it. In fact, one more point here. In fact, this information can be managed no matter if they're on my network or not, because we connect directly using an agent to the machine. So if they're sitting in Starbucks or in a hotel across the globe, as long as they're on the internet, I can still access their machine and push patches to them or remote control their machine or do the functions that I need to do. And when you've got laptops living in the wild, folks working at home, it's huge to be able to have those machines patched, particularly given the wave of ransomware that is now sweeping across the country and the lack of patching on endpoints that has caused those machines to be vulnerable. So we'll let you manage all that stuff by tying footprints into BMC client management. And that gives you full control over those endpoints from a ticket, no matter where the endpoint is. And just, just so you know, 
I have this information about their asset here, which means this ticket could just as easily be triggering a deployment of software to my asset. If I've requested in this ticket deployment of software, then Footprints can tell client management, hey, when this ticket's approved, go deploy the software and update the ticket and update the license count. So you can literally automate the request from start to finish, including the approval, simply by using the Footprint solution and BMC client management if you're trying to manage those endpoints. Now you can capture any detail in the records that you want. Again, guys, I'm just kind of drifting through here to give you an idea. In my case, I keep all of my actions separate in my category list. Categorization is a swear word for some folks. I keep everything separate here because I don't want to have to keep writing the word reset for every possible password reset I could do. So instead I just put the word reset in once. I'm going to do a reset. It's going to be a parts of my account and security services. It's going to have to do with passwords and it's going to have to do with your favorite system that you reset passwords for whatever that happens to be, Active Directory or whatever. So now I've just categorized a request that basically says I'm going to be doing an accounts and security service on passwords, Active Directory, and I'm resetting it as an action. In this way, your categories can easily grow with you rather than having them become a jumbled mess over time because I'm listing them out based on services. Now you can see I've got internal notes here, right? viewable only by technicians. This is a good segue to talk a little bit about what customers can see and do in Footprints. From a customer perspective, if you give them access, you can let your customers see a service catalog. And this is a vast improvement from the way this used to function in older versions of the product. In fact, the service catalog is a part of an object in V12 called the service portfolio, which makes sense, that's where service catalogs live. The service portfolio represents your contracts, your support contracts, as well as your service level agreements. It also represents the services that you as an organization offer, and those services are referred to as a service catalog. These are categories that you can drill into, kind of like shopping. Different folks can see different categories of service depending upon who they are. So in this way, the right people see the things that they're entitled to ask. And if you think about this, in the real world, if you go to your power company's website, you cannot ask them to build a new power plant, even though the power company does build new power plants. You're just not given permission to request it. Customers can be given permission to request only what they're entitled to see. That allows them to drill into the service catalog and kind of shop for services by category. And when they see something they want, you know, I do want to get one of those new workstations. Awesome. Include as much or as little detail as you would like. This is the write-up like you would read on Amazon.com about the product itself, including pictures, how long it takes, how much it weighs, what sizes it cups in, how long it will take to fulfill the request, how much it costs, whether your manager has to approve, or any other details you'd like. And if the customer says, yeah, I want to get me one of those, then the act of requesting the service fills out an order form. Notice I've typed nothing. Fills out an order form and then they can save that request and it'll go off to whatever approvals you need to become fulfilled so that they can get that desktop or whatever the service is the customer is asking for. They can also, of course, simply open an incident ticket or any other type of record you give them access to. And you can see I've made it super simple for my customers. Just fill in a brief description, give me some notes here. And I've asked my customers for some simple information about how it's affecting them and how it's impacting them. This is impacting only me. I'm asking them for priority, but I'm not saying what's your priority. Because if, if you fly for a living, or if you fly at all, and somebody say, there at the airport said, what's your priority for boarding? And that's all they did was ask you, what would you tell them? I'm last, please board me at the end. I don't want any overhead space. No, you would say I'm number one. So we're gonna ask the question some questions of the customer in a very simplistic, straight up way. Hey, this is affecting only me. It's already probably not critical because it's one person. And I'm working normally, almost assuredly not critical now. I'm working fine, just affecting me. I just want something from you. Speaking of which, I've given my customers easy access to things they want or need. I'm asking them simple questions. Something isn't working right, which gives me an I can't choice. I can't do something that I should be able to do. I should be able to connect to the internet. I can't, I should be able to print. I can't, I should be able to use an app. I can't. These choices, like everything else in Footprints, are yours to make. 
Or in my case, I just said I need something new. Now we'll give them some choices about stuff they might want. Maybe I need a new PC. Maybe I'd like a new job or whatever else they can request. So you can give your customers access to a ticket that looks and feels exactly the way you want it to look and feel with only the information present that you care about and none of the other stuff. Notice that that field we were looking at over here, the one that says internal notes, well, that's not visible to my customer. Neither is any of this other stuff on my form. My technicians are the ones that are seeing this info. They're entitled to, they're, they're the doctors here. Whereas my customers are my patients, I'm just going to give them a simple form to fill in. Because if this is hard, customers are going to call you and not fill it out at all. Right? So you want to make this as simple as possible so that your customers can quickly interact with you. Now, when those tickets come in, when we start capturing data about those records, sometimes we may find that we need to link to other tickets. Maybe the reason for our incident today is because of a change that happened last night. Maybe the reboot of the email server is what's causing people to have email issues today. Footprints allows you to quickly link. Remember, using that link control that tunnels into other objects, I now tunneled into my change requests to look at the other changes. I can see this change request is the one that may be the reason why we no longer have email access today. Or I can take it the other direction and say, you know what, to fix this issue, to fix this house on fire thing we've got going on, I need to create a change request so that I can log the change and say, yes, this change request is being done in the name of this incident. I've got to put out the fire and I need a change in order to do it. That way you have full documentation and the tickets are related to each other. This incident and this change request are just as linked as Greg was linked to this ticket as a contact. So in this way, no matter what kind of work you're doing, Footprints B12 lets you readily assess this info and get it into the tickets that, that you care about. The old version of the product did allow you to link records, but for those of you who may have used the old version, you know that it was somewhat painful. You had to save your change ticket, you had to just save your incident ticket, you had to bring one of them up in details mode, you had to remember the number of the other ticket to link it to, you had to type it in, you had to verify the ticket, you had to choose link. That's a lot of stuff just to say, let alone to do. So in my case, I just created that change ticket right from inside the incident, linked it back. And that's true with anything, whether I'm linking change requests or configuration items or problem records. Maybe I would like to do a problem investigation. Maybe I'd like to just link it to the incidents that are happening with email because we seem to be having a lot of them and find out root cause why these are happening. Or instead, Maybe I'm simply listing configuration items here and saying, well, this happened against Microsoft Exchange, so we'll link it to the Microsoft Exchange configuration item. And if I want to find out some information about that configuration item, I can simply open the configuration item, see the details about it from here, see any notes or any other info that I may have included. And if it's linked to other configuration items or linked to other tickets, such as it is here, right? then I can see that it's running Windows 2012 and that it's got a bunch of other tickets that are open against it. So we've had a few issues with email going on because I can easily see that data from here. So Footprint V12 lets me move around in the system, gaining access to the capabilities that I'm entitled to without having to pack my bags and change the workspace. It allows me to drill into other objects that I have access to so that I can bring their data right back into this main record. And it does this so that I can save time instead of having to move place to place or root around in the system to find my data. So this allows me a complete picture of the organization. And setting this up, right, this is where the rubber meets the road. Lots of tools take tickets. In fact, pretty much any of the tools in this space will take a ticket. So that part of what I'm showing you is really not the rocket science part. The part that's cool is the fact that when you go to set footprints up, you don't have to script. You don't have to know how to spell DBA or SQL. No DBAs are harmed even in the making of the product, right? Because as long as there's a SQL instance somewhere, you can point to it even if that's one of your SQL farms. So you can point to wherever you have SQL, install footprints. Footprints will set up its own table structures. Nobody has to build that for you. It maintains it for you. All the DBAs have to do is their usual backups of their, of their databases. And the rest of the work is actually managed by your administrators. When you're working in footprints, administration is done with your mouse. So whether you're setting up entire new business processes, such as I did, 
And in my case, I built the IT service management business process, which gives me my configuration management database and my service portfolio, where my service catalog lives and my incidents and changes and service desk work. It builds all of this as a wizard. And honestly, it was this hard to do. Right? I, I told it I wanted a new address book. We're just going to use my existing one. I'll click continue. If I click create now, I can name this stuff anything I want, include descriptions, name all of these, whatever I would like. If I click create, Footprints will build all of these containers for me, and they'll look like what we've been talking about, and they'll do that in about six minutes' time. So it'll construct all that stuff, no coding, no scripting. And if I want to set the workspaces or other containers up myself, my address books, which fields will I capture, my service portfolios, which services will I offer, or which contracts will I maintain, which knowledge will I gather, or which configuration items am I going to manage, any workspace, can of course touch any of these objects just like they can all touch each other and communicate information between them. This allows me to create new workspaces right from scratch or to manage my existing workspaces. You can see I have a lot of examples here in my environment. Each workspace fit, fit for purpose so that if I'm using it for managing fraud cases or if I'm using it to manage biomedical equipment or computer security incident responses, because we do have power plants that use the product, or whatever the functions are, right? I have a collection of workspaces under here. This is a major change, too, from earlier versions. Footprints lets you create workspaces within workspace containers now. All of these objects I'm looking at are secretly workspaces. If I go to build a new one, it's gonna say, hey, you wanna build another workspace? It'll put it right under here. This is really the same as your pictures folder on your desktop houses pictures, and your music folder is probably where you store your music. The workspaces and the folders that you can create for them in V12 allow you to hierarchically arrange those workspaces so certain types of work that need to share their data can all be placed into a single folder, and then rapidly share field data so that I don't have to build the same field multiple times. I just build it once and assign it to whichever workspace they should have it or whichever ones don't. You can see I'm just double clicking these and saying, yeah, I want my security investigation workspace to have access to this particular field too. So Footprints lets you quickly design. And I'm just gonna pick on my incidents here real quick. When managing the workspace itself, you can see I have a form for my customers. This looks exactly like the form they are seeing except I'm looking at it from an administrative standpoint. So my issue title, and here's my issue, and all those sections, that's exactly what my customer is looking at here. Issue title, here's my issue, et cetera. Here's the fields on the form. This is what my customer sees. This is how it looks administratively. And if I would like my customers to see additional info, I can create my own sections if I want. Oops, if I could type, it'd be good create my own sections, put the fields out here that I want to and say, you know what, we're just gonna have this company field show up out here. I'm just gonna give you an example. We'll drag and drop it out there. Maybe I wanna make this a couple columns wide. Maybe I would like to change some of the choices and add additional ones. There, I just added another company to this and saved it. So Footprints allows me to quickly lay the form out the way I want to with as many columns on the sections as I would like for whichever audience needs to see the record. And in that way, the form itself can display the right data to the right people at the right time without me ever coding anything. I don't have to script a thing. Now, if I'm choosing to, I could of course save this information and then publish it later because the changes that I make are saved as drafts and I can publish that information when I'm darn good and ready so that I don't have to expose the new changes that I'm making to other folks until I'm ready to expose it. I can create whatever fields I want to in Footprints and add those fields directly to the record. Here I have custom field number 67. These can be of any type, including new field types like assignment. So I can have as many assignee fields as I care for. This gives me the ability to track my primary assignee and my team assignee and my secondary assignee and my escalated to assignee in separate fields. So there's no question about whether it was escalated. Hey, is there an escalated to assignee? Yes, there is and it was escalated to them, and I know that they have the ball now. So Footprints allows me to quickly create these fields and then drag and drop them out onto the page. It allows me to manage rules against all of this work so that I can create business rules in Footprints that do literally any kind of automation from making changes to the ticket on the screen right? because of things that I've changed, checkboxes I've checked or unchecked can make other field values populate or not, for example, 
or sending email reminders or setting up auto assignments or evoking service level management or escalating the ticket to someone. And the rules are all built with my mouse so that when I construct a rule of any type, I can name my rule, describe my rule, tell Footprints when the rule is allowed to run, tell Footprints what the conditions are for the rule, so what must be true on the record for this rule to fire. Hey, I'm looking for old tickets, for example, because I want to do something when I find tickets that are old. And when we get those old tickets, I probably want to notify somebody that we've got tickets out there that are more than four days old. Now, I can add additional criteria here and say, hey, it can't just be that it's four days old. I'm looking for tickets that are four days old and that have a priority. I'm just going to pick on priority here. That have a priority equal to urgent, because urgent tickets that are four days old probably should have been closed a while ago. And then tell Footprints what action I want to take. This can literally be anything I'd like from changing the assignment to setting a field value or emailing to someone or several someones, setting up a broadcast message, even executing an external action like running an external script of any type so that I can pass data out of footprints to that external tool and make it take action based on values in my footprints record. This rule I just built in front of you is part of the automation capability and it is as far as you go in terms of coding because there is no script. It's all done with your mouse, all point and click. Now, if you're also wanting to do things like automate your processes from a workflow standpoint, Footprints lets us do that too. I'm going to pick on change management here real quick. Every workspace can be set up and would be set up so that it captures the data that's relevant for the process. So change management is going to have information about change requests, managed with statuses about change requests, and managed with workflow to make sure that the change request lives the life it's supposed to live. So when I create workflow, you can see I have four different workflows that I've created here for changes. I'm going to go back over to my change ticket real quick. By the way, for those of you on old versions of Footprints, I just did something impossible. I went to the administrative area and then back again and right to the tickets that I left. So easy to see, easy to do, and easy to get access to my functionality without losing it. You can see I have several change types here, standard, normal, and emergency, and technical. Each one of these happens to drive a particular workflow in my case. So depending on which one I pick, the system is going to shove it through a workflow. And the workflow is the picture. This picture tells Footprints where the train stops on the stations and what happens when it stops there. So in my case, it goes into pending approval. And if one or more persons do not say yes, and these can be anyone, your customers, your managers, no special licensing required for a customer to say yes versus a technician to say yes, right? If you have the ability to approve, if you have the change capability that's part of the suite in Footprints, you'll have this ability. That means that those folks can weigh in, and if they said yes, it goes to approve for production. If they said no, it goes to rejected. And if it goes to rejected, then you can see I have a little R here, a rule that says we probably should notify the person that it was rejected and didn't get approved, and then we'll close the ticket and off it goes to the end of the life cycle. So Footprints lets you create workflows for literally any process, whether they're simplistic or, as you can see in my normal workflow here, whether they're quite complex. I'm going to zoom out a little on this, guys, just to give you an idea. Very complex workflow, several different states that the ticket passes through all controlled based on, in my case, whether I've picked a normal change or a technical change so that the ticket moves through the right life cycle. And building the workflows themselves, super easy. In fact, I'll construct one right in front of you. Normally, you base your workflows off of your status because that's where the life cycle of the ticket is, but it can be any field where there are finite choices in them. As you can see, there are several others to pick from. And I'm going to say my ticket start as request, go to pending approval, they become authorized, they become assigned out, and then they become closed. That'll be our that'll be our workflow. So I just built this workflow. Footprints constructed it very linearly. I don't want pending approval tickets to be authorized. And right now this workflow allows that to happen. The train goes from here to here without stopping anywhere for someone to say yes or no. So I'm going to fix this. I'm going to remove that area. And I'm going to say, hey, if it's pending approval, this is an approval state. Now, anything can be an approval state. I'm just going to tell Footprints this is. It asks me if I want to add approved and rejected. I'm going to tell it, yes, I do. And now, if it's approved, then 
I will allow it to go authorized. And you can see this is the extent of the coding I just did for that. I just told Footprints, things coming in at pending approval will get approved by one or more persons. I can pick whoever they are. So if I go over here to my approval state, you can see that currently it's just me. I can add additional approvers. They can be customers or managers or whoever I'd like. They can be teams. I can pick from dynamic content in the record. So perhaps the category of the request helps me know who the approver is or even set up fallback voters in case people are out of the office so that the right folks can weigh in and say yes or no. I'll pick the approvers. If they say yes, it becomes approved. If they say no, it's gonna go to rejected. And I just move this over here so that I can quickly move it to close. And maybe I'll send a notification here by creating a business rule that sends an email notification to whoever made the request. So this is this is vastly different from older versions of Footprints for sure, because there was no such a thing as workflow. There was no such a thing as a business rule engine. In the old versions of the product, there were seven different rule engines that you had to work with to automate things. All of that work is actually done in a simplistic way now. And can be done with a simple point and click interface using your mouse to paint a picture that tells Footprints where those tickets go in their life cycle. And you can have as many workflows and as many workspaces as you would like. There is no charge for creating as many workspaces as you want to. So let Footprints do whatever kind of work you wanted to do. Lastly, guys, I want to talk briefly about the ability to find things in Footprints. Footprints before always let you search for stuff. Right? You could find anything you wanted. There was a little search bar up top or you could create advanced searches. I can still search for whatever I'd like, but because Footprints is no longer landing me in a workspace, I'm going to tell Footprints where to look. Hey, I want to find all the email tickets and I would like to find them in my incident records. So I'm just going to tell Footprints, search for all the email issues. You can see I have a rule that turns some of these red because they're critical issues. And in that way, I can quickly see them as standouts from the rest of the tickets that are in here. So simple searching, very, very simple and powerful. And because I'm no longer landing in a workspace in version 12, I can pick exactly where I want to search. Now I can also create much more advanced search capabilities. This is really a query writer. It allows me to search any workspaces, name the search, anything I'd like, share it with others, include notes. Three years from now, when you come in here, you're gonna wonder why you created a search called new search. And if you have notes in here, you can know exactly what the search did without having to run it and find out the hard way. Search in every container you want. You can see all my containers are here, whether it's facilities equipment or my security incidents or my regular incidents and problems or any other type of ticket. I can search them all and find the data that I want. Search for any conditions in those records that I care for. So all of my incident ticket fields are here. I can search them all. And therefore, all fields that I capture can be searchable and I can find all the data that I care about always in Footprints. Every piece of data that I capture can be found and included if I want to as a part of the report because I can simply tell Footprints, let's include that information. So whichever columns I want to include in my report, maybe the record number and the status of the ticket and its priority and its title, any other values I'd like, maybe I would like the title of the ticket to show up there right after record number. Footprints lets me build quick searches. And if I save this search as a query, then, and I didn't actually specify anything here, but then Footprints would let me save this and use it as a report later. The basis for the search, right? The search itself can be used as a query later on when I'm using service analytics. So this allows me to quickly go in and create any kind of report really that I choose, whether it's ticket management reports that show me, hey, how long does it take me to go from status A to status Z, or you guys define what status A and status Z is, or how much time do I spend between those statuses? Maybe I simply want to watch for particular tickets being created. Hey, we just did a Citrix change over the weekend. I'd like to see if people are still calling about that today or whatever it happens to be as well as my service portfolio reporting so that I can do reports against my service level agreements or custom reports or dashboard creation, which does have a dashboard builder in it. Any of those reports can be built and when they are, you will see them in the report list. So you can see I have 18 different custom reports. You can see that I have several different uh, ticket management reports that are created. Drilling into any of those reports will let us look at the report writer. Now I want to briefly talk about dashboards. This is the dashboard pool. It contains any report that I chose to add to the pool so that I can build a dashboard from the components in the pool. 
basically I'm constructing a dashboard by saying, yeah, I add this report and add that report, and oh yes, we definitely want this report on this dashboard and that report, and we'll put this report in and I'll add that report too, and maybe I should have this report in and finally that one. Cadeau Footprints to display the dashboard. I can of course save this dashboard so that other folks can view it later. And then Footprints will start creating the data and displaying it. I can arrange these components of the dashboard the way I would like. Now, I probably don't have a lot of interesting information in my environment because I, I don't operate it like a production environment. I'm not taking thousands of tickets and closing them every day. But the system allows me to create these dashboard components so that I can see the information I want, save it as a shared one or private just for me, or don't. And instead, simply run a report right, that I can deliver when I want because I can automatically run these reports and deliver it to any email address as many times a week or a day as I would like to. Hey, my manager said they wanted it on their desk first thing Monday morning, so I can schedule this to deliver at 6 a.m. as a PDF document to their desktop every single Monday or every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday while I'm sitting at home drinking coffee. If I check this box, it puts the report in the dashboard pool so that I can use it to build dashboards, or I can send it to any screen in Footprints, any console. That way I can see who my frequent callers are in the address book by including a report that I share out there and put it on my address book. I use any of my saved searches that I created in the step before, so I can pull up those searches and then have that search bring back the tickets for the report, or I can create a new search if I choose, but this lets me make searches and save them for use later, the essence of an object-oriented solution. You can see I've included some fields like the ticket number and the status, et cetera. All I did to include the fields from the record was check the boxes to say these fields with the check boxes will appear in my report out. So you can see I have some checks here. These are the fields that will appear. And those fields are included. I can certainly add additional columns just by checking them and they'll show up as a part of the list. Or if I want to, I can use Footprints to create pivot tables. It now builds cross-tabbed pivot tables or create charts that are simply not found in Excel. You can still export your data to Excel directly. This is an actual Excel file. So if you prefer, you can manipulate your data there. But because Footprints lets you do data aggregation that includes things like distinct counts, or even include and create your own formula directly inside of these columns and rows, this allows you to do the functions that most folks would have to export for and make sure that you can schedule those reports to be delivered at the time that you want. And of course, if you're including charts or graphs, these can also be output as PDF documents or Excel files so that you can continue to manipulate those documents there if you'd like. Folks, I wanna thank you for listening to me sort of jet through this. It's a lot of product and a lot of capability under the hood. And version 12 of Footprints has really move light years beyond what the older, older versions of the solution had to offer you. So if you haven't had a chance to move to this version of the product yet, we'd love to talk with you. We have done more of these than anyone in North America. So we know how to get you to this version of Footprint, whether you're coming off of a former version or another solution. And that way, you can start managing the tickets with the life cycles that you want to. So that said, Daniel, I'm gonna turn this back over to you. And if there are questions that I can answer, I'll be happy to try to do that. All righty. Um, we do have one question here. Um, and I'm going to just read it uh, verbatim. Uh, that uh, the results are specific to who is running the report or search based on their identity. Yes. You're not going to be entitled to see data that you are not entitled to see based on who you are. So in other words, if I came in here and didn't have access to human resource data, I wouldn't be viewing human resource data as a part of some report right, if I didn't have access to it. Now, it would allow me to include the field values from the report, but it would not allow me to actually drill in and look at any of the data underneath it, the ticket data or any personally identifiable information, et cetera. So even though it would allow folks who had the report building ability to build a report, I wouldn't actually be able to read the data from it. So it's not gonna be directly relevant based on who built it. It's more who has the ability to view the data that lives underneath it. All righty. We have another question here that just came in. Um, does BMC have a timeline for rolling out an app for mobile devices? You know, that's something that folks have asked about. BMC has 
been in development of one in the past. We do not know what their status is. And one of the reasons that they haven't done this is because your mobile device runs footprints perfectly now without a mobile app, right? I mean, there's no capability really that the mobile app would give you that you don't already have, except the mobile app wouldn't be intended to administer footprints, for example. But I can administer it already from any device I have. A mobile app will display on a mobile device in HTML5. Footprints displays its data in HTML5, so the forms themselves would look the same, whether I displayed it as part of a website's content or as a part of a mobile application. This is one of the reasons why BMC has not been in any huge hurry to make an app, because all the capabilities that you can do in Footprints, from administering it to setting up rules to responding to tickets, etc., can all be done already on any mobile device without the need for any mobile application whatsoever. And since it's HTML5, it will scale to very, very tiny screens without you having to use a jeweler's loop to read the data or larger screens if you happen to have something of that size. All righty, we're getting a couple more here. Uh, let's pull up the next one. Uh, yes, the presentation will be available later. We do um, like to render uh, everything out on Friday, and then we'll have it up on our YouTube channel um, sometime early next week. That's when we can um, usually get it up there. Um, if you're having trouble finding it, you can just email us at info at flycastpartners.com, and we'll get it to you there. And um, I'm going to read the next one here. So when, uh, the question is, so when my students or technicians go between buildings, uh, they lose any data they had open, or are they required to log in again? Going between buildings. So if they have logged out of footprints or not logged out of footprints right, at their former station, Clearly, since it's a website, if you're logging in from a different location, Footprints is going to see you now at a different locale, and therefore that web browser is going to accept your credentials and let you get back into Footprints. You wouldn't have lost data because before leaving or walking away from Footprints, you would have chosen to save the information that you had. So it'll pull up things based on where you had last been working. But anybody who changes the location in which they are logging in, this browser versus that one, this platform versus that platform, Footprints, of course, is not going to have a clue that you just moved to a different building and you now are on a different browser. There's no way that it knows, oh, you're still logged in even on this other machine in a different place. Now, you can use what's called web authentication in Footprints, which means if they are authenticated on your network already, right, then Footprints can be bypassed in terms of its authentication interception and allow instead the web server to authenticate based on the fact that those folks are on your network. In that case, if they bring up their web browser on a different platform, because they're on the network, it will simply automatically log them into that new location without them supplying any credentials. But the same truth is there. They would no longer be logged into the original location. They would now be logged in on their phone or logged in on the other desktop in the other building, if that were true. Okay. And uh, same user, uh, same participant, uh, when creating reports or searches, can they be made dynamically and then shared so that the results are specific to who's running the report or search based on their identity? Well, since Footprints will only let you see data based on your identity, if you're running reports that include things, and I'll just use this as an example, that include things that are assigned to me, Footprints allows you to do an at me, right, the at symbol with me, so that if you run the report, then the assignee field will be filled in with you because you're looking for tickets that are assigned to you. If I ran the report, the at me would reflect tickets assigned to me. So that way, some dynamic content can be set. Now, if you're telling Footprints to look backwards in time, for example, it does not prompt you for, hey, you know, pick your date ranges here for, the, for those reports. Part of that is done to make sure that people don't accidentally go creating you know, reports that go back to the beginning of time. But if you're setting the reports up, you can simply tell Footprints to create the report in what's called a, a relative mode. So if you're looking for dates as you're building your reports or searches, and I'm just going to go back into my search engine here real quick, maybe give you an idea what I mean. If you're building those reports to look for particular criteria, you can tell Footprints 
not just to look for less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, but you can tell it if it's looking for particular days to either go forward or backward in time on those days. I'm just going to use something like created on. So if I'm saying, hey, show me all the tickets created on an exact date, well, maybe I really want to do it relative to where I am. So I want to see all tickets created during the previous one month. Now, if I run the report in May, it's going to look at April's tickets. If I run the report in June, it's going to look at May's tickets. So you can specify in the report when you start kind of how far back in time you're wanting to look. Or if you picked a range, for example, you can just say, hey, only bring me the stuff from today or only bring me last month's tickets or the month before last tickets. Or if I specified instead of a month, if I said my relative here is not during the past minutes or month or weeks, but maybe it's days, I could just say, give me the tickets for the past 30 days. Now, no matter where I am, it's going to look backwards 30 days, which means if I'm in May, it's going to include some of May's tickets and some of April's, because I said 30 days in reverse is what I'm looking for. So you can specify those parameters at the beginning, name the report, and then allow folks to run it to see the data that they want without them having to accidentally, oops, I the internet right, or, or your entire database if you're trying to make them search through hundreds of thousands of tickets because they didn't specify the date ranges correctly. Excellent. All right. Looks like we have uh, one or two more here. Um, this one goes, I have been told making updates in a development environment and testing for production readiness is okay, but deployment into production is a real pain. Is there a way to move from one environment to the other easily? Sure. Uh, in fact, the old version of the product did not permit this, so maybe maybe that technology that you're referring to is the old version of Footprints. If I choose to create a workspace or any other container from a template, the template does not have to be built in this instance of Footprints. I could build it on my instance of Footprints here in my development environment, for example. I could send you the XML file. You would browse for the XML file I sent you and you would have the workspace that I sent you in your environment. Now, you wouldn't have my tickets, you wouldn't have my people, but you would have the workspace, the construction of it, the automations that are involved, the fields, the data that you're gathering. All that information would be present in the workspace so that you could start using it for yourself. This portability of workspaces or other containers did not exist in earlier versions of Footprints, only in version 12. So it is very easy to move from environment to environment in footprints uh, under version 12 because you can simply import that information as a template and it can be built in any other version of, of version 12 or right? on mine or some other development instance that you may have and then move to your production environment in that way. And I know that we're just past the top of the hour, so we'll have time to, to cover one more question. And it looks like we do. It's a, it's a two-part question, and it uh, goes uh, like this. Are workspace templates available for download from BMC? I noticed uh, the work, workspace templates you have I can use, and then it says I'm talking about the creating a workspace within, within a workspace using a template. Sure. So basically, you could do the same thing, right? If I'm in here and I said, hey, I want to create a new workspace item, it's going to build that new workspace item, but I could choose to apply a template file that's kind of grayed out here, right? I just built a new workspace called Ticket 2 right now inside of my change management area, and there it is. But I could just as easily apply a template file. BMC does not currently have uh, a bevy of these. This is something that Flycast is working on so that we can get some ideal best practice workspaces put together as templates and we are working hand in hand with BMC to make this a possibility. I don't have any particular dates yet for when this capability might be there, but we are in discussions with BMC as Flycast to be able to make this a possibility. So they are looking to extend those workspace functions to include templates that would be built by partners with tons of experience such as ourselves who've seen a lot of this stuff in the market space and therefore can create best practice workspaces for literally any process that you'd like. So that's something that's forthcoming. You just don't have any particular dates or times for when it will be when it'll be available. All right. Well if there are no other questions um, I'm going to thank everyone for joining us today, and I want to thank you, Greg, for another stellar pr presentation. And 
Um, if anyone would like any additional information on BMC Footprints version 12, uh, then feel free to give us a call at 1-844-FLYCAST. That's actually 1-844-359-2278. Or just feel free to email us at info at flycastpartners.com and we'll have someone get back to you with your questions uh, within at least five business days. And um, if nothing else, uh, thanks everyone for all the great questions today, and um, I wish everyone uh, a great weekend.